As we speak, we are racing towards the most crucial point in human history, in which our future will be decided. We need sane voices to speak loud and clearly about the crises that we have collectively created and the issues that need to be resolved urgently. Political instability, conflicts and wars, ecological and social crises, and mental health issues, many of us can see that we need a change. But how exactly can we bring that change about? We are some of the most privileged people that have ever had the opportunity to live on this planet. It is truly an amazing time to be alive, and we have so much to be grateful for. We have fresh, clean water, on demand, huge quantities of food, machinery that can transport us to destinations across the globe, technology that enables us to communicate and share information with one another regardless of location at a moment's notice. Everything we could possibly need, and far more, is within our reach. Even with all these things that we have, we still find that we are discontented and unhappy with our lives. Our consumerist mentality leaves us wanting more and more as we try to fill the void of happiness. We find ourselves addicted to drugs, alcohol, entertainment, gambling, porn, and food in order to escape from reality and to try to feel better. Depression, stress, anxiety, and a whole number of mental disorders are more prevalent than they ever have been. This way that we are living and behaving as consumers in this fast-paced world that constantly pressures us to conform to its expectations is leading us towards the edge of a cliff. All change starts within, in the way that we think and look out at the world, in the way that we live our daily lives, moment to moment. All of the seemingly small and insignificant actions that we make as individuals all add up to one collective reality that we experience together. Only by changing the way that we think and act as individuals on a wider scale can we change the world that we experience around us. We need to reconnect with our roots and with the planet that we live on so that we may more clearly see what is not serving us, what is not of use. There are certain tools that we have available to us on this planet that are here to assist and help us make these inner changes in profound and powerful ways. These tools come in the form of sacred plants that can be found in Peru, ayahuasca and huachuma. It is essential that we protect the sacredness of these plants and ensure the survival of this ancient knowledge for future generations. Both ayahuasca and huachuma are lawful to use in Peru, and its cultural roots allow for a warm legal climate. This attracts a number of tourist and spiritual seekers from across the world to come and experience them. For thousands of years, the shamans of Peru have used these plants traditionally for healing purposes, to create a stronger sense of connection with self and community. Archaeology can trace this back for at least 3,000 years to the Chavin culture. But intuition tells us that these practices evolved around the use of plant medicines over a much longer period of time. I stumbled across Sergei's article on Graham Hancock's website where he recounts his experience with peyote, a psychoactive cactus that grows in Mexico, where he spent three days on the edge of death after being stung by scorpions several times during the peyote ceremony. 
Having had several experiences with peyote myself, his experience touched me. The genuineness of it and the transformation that it brought about in Sergei's life. I was compelled to reach out and connect with him to let him know how his sharing it impacted me. And soon after that, we connected again as I made my intentions clear to come and visit him at his home in Peru. This is why I made the decision to travel halfway across the world in complete trust, having never met Sergei. There was something much deeper within me calling me to come. And now that I am here, it feels very much like home. I was drawn to the authenticity with which he speaks and that is reflected in the way with which he works with the Wachuma cactus. He has had an adventurous, interesting and difficult journey that has finally led him to his home in Peru. His genuine spiritual search for truth, life experiences and a decade of working with the Wachuma cactus are remarkable. Sergei believes shamanism is the key to personal and collective change that we want to see in the world. While respecting other healing plants, he has dedicated his life to serving this particular medicine and this dedication becomes apparent through the experiences that he shares with those who come to visit. There are many people who offer shamanic retreats in Peru, but how do you choose who to work with and where to go? When you first meet Sergei, you don't see a stereotypical image of a shaman. There's no headdress, no outfit, you just see a person that looks like you. But from the very first look, you begin to feel something real about him. His grounded, confident, reasonable and clear answers disarm you of your doubts. A strong feeling of being in the right place at the right time rises from within you. That's my book. I born in Ukraine. Uh, back then it was Soviet Union. And uh, when I was nearly 13 years old, we moved to Israel with my parents. And basically I grew up there until 24 and then I moved to America. I kept searching for my path. I knew that shamanic experience, that's what I actually want. And I found people in Peru and uh, that was uh, Spirit Quest, uh, founded by Howard Lawler, an American who lived in for many years and I felt a uh, truth in him when we talked so I decided to go see him and work with ayahuasca and wachuma for five weeks and it was a life-changing experience really you know when I had a uh, wachuma first time I, I felt like I knew this medicine I felt like it was me so I dedicated myself to this plan. Sergei believes that the ceremony begins long before you hold the cup in your hand. It starts when you make a commitment to take the medicine. Sergei prepares his own medicine. A medicine man must prepare his own brew. This is a process where you infuse yourself with the medicine and put your intention and love into it. This is done openly and often those who are staying at the Wachuma Wasi are invited to join in with the preparation. The purpose of the ceremony is to bring conscious awareness to what it is we are doing. It is an expression and act of respect and gratitude so that we can be reminded of the care and attention with which these tools must be handled. With compassion, with love, with a true heart and clear intention. Please. 
plants have a huge capacity to expand and accelerate the growth of our conscious awareness in life-changing ways should we choose to fully open up to and receive the healing and wisdom that they have to offer. The cooking process is very important. This is where I fuse myself with the medicine. I visualize the healing that people receive when they come here. I see their smiles, their brightness, their clarity and understanding. It's an intimate process. This is when you really make the connection with the spirit of the plant. It takes many days to prepare it and this is where I stay here and uh, just concentrate and contemplate and bring all my experience into the process of cooking. The ceremonies run during the daylight for two reasons. The first is so that you can see the beauty of the natural world all around you. The second is that Sergei reserves the night time for his family. Each time we drink, we go to different places in nature where we can find the necessary silence that is required for healing and understanding. Sergei believes as I do that nature is the true source of healing, as it is where we come from and what we are. The purpose of this work is to help you reach shamanic ecstasy and let you bloom like the flower of the Wachuma cactus. As well as having an immediate and direct spiritual experience, the medicine also has the capacity to unlock your creativity and artistic abilities and enrich your life. For example, if you have an inclination for writing or a passion for thinking, this can be magnified and manifested, which could result in the creative expression of yourself.
Throughout the day, we take part in what Sergey calls spontaneous conversation, which serves as gentle guidance as the experience unfolds. Sergey is flexible and willing to talk with you about whatever is relevant to help you make progress, deepen understanding, and discover your own answers. Sergey has crafted his altar over the decade that he has been working with Wachuma. It serves as an energetic anchor throughout the ceremony. Every object on it has significance and meaning to him. Different attributes of life, including birds, animals, and ancestral connections, which is the core of the shamanic tradition of Peru. At the end of the day, we return to the altar to connect and provide a certain level of grounding that allows a smooth transition into the period of relaxation that follows the ceremony. Sergey goes back to his family, and we return to the main house to relax, make food, music, and share our experiences and insights with each other. Wachuma is a really wise plant and it completely changed my life. It deconstructs you and it uh, pairs you down to your, your fundamental elemental self. It brings me closer to me and my family, things that I've been neglecting in my life. Wachuma is uh, pure magic that um, allowed me to finally live life. It's been very, very profound, very strong, yet gentle at the same time. And uh, for me, it's been an agent to connect my divinity to all that is and source. And it makes everything so much more beautiful that you just feel this tremendous gratitude. Our society has us kind of functioning like robots we're just oblivious to everything around us. But Wachuma helps you to see in a way where you take time to notice things that you would never notice. Right now in this moment in our existence on Earth, I feel it's all the more important that Wachuma joins with the human spirit to connect to the moment and to nature. It allows you to become the core of who you are. I was on a long spiritual path of five years of doing all kinds of things and it isn't until I, I found Wachuma that I could really make significant changes because it makes you understand yourself on a deeper level, it gives clarity and I believe by understanding things deeper um, you can already change them. So happy I spent a month here. It's been a, a life-changing thing for me. Wachuma kind of helped put all the pieces together of the different things that I was getting out of the plant medicine. It's a guide. It's a powerful guide that allows you to, to go through the difficulties that you have experienced and uh, to grow within them. Every time I'm, um, I'm having a ceremony, I put an intention and somehow everything works out the way and I get the answers I need. And I feel it's giving me what I need to get at that moment. It's not giving me more than I can handle. So that's why you need like more ceremonies to go deeper until you get to that point that you're really in your subconscious where you were not ready for in the beginning. It strips you. You're naked. You're a baby but you've also had a life and so you, you can examine it in an honest, loving way. It shows you a path in uh, an, honest, an honest look at your life. 
I could feel it in my heart. It just helps you think about life. I just love it. You know, I would, I would recommend this medicine to anyone on the planet. You find a lot of compassion and empathy for yourself and for others. And uh, in that compassion, you find forgiveness. And in that space of forgiveness, you find, you find love. And love is what uh, heals. It's a really intense uh, healing that can change your life forever. 20 years of therapy are the same, like three sessions of Wachuma. Like the first time I heard about this medicine, I remember saying, I've been looking for this my whole entire life. And, and now I'm here and I love it. And I know it loves me. My experience in Wachuma was the, is encountering new friends a new family and uh, feeling completely respected, honored as a, as a human being. And uh, it's a beautiful communion and uh, it's a completely safe environment for experiencing this beautiful medicine. It's for me, it's the best to come home after the ceremony and to have a fireplace and yeah, to share a meal with the others staying in the house and sharing our uh, experience at the fire. So I think this is a very important part of the ceremony. You're kind of coming home in Wachumawasi. You feel uh, very welcome. Uh, it's, it's, it's laughter, it's wisdom, it's camaraderie. It's, um, it's a fantastic feeling. It's uh, kind of like a womb, you know? It's been very pleasant, it still is. I really like it, I have a nice room. I get to look out the window and see the mountains. Um, everyone here has such a peaceful, positive energy. So it's almost like being at home, but a little more peaceful, because I come from the city. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great location, and it's easy to get to the markets and explore on the days off, and have a lot of fun hiking and all that. So I've been, been able to you know, get in a lot better shape. You know the. Uh, Wachimawasi is at 10,000 feet, so you, you know it's it's a nice challenge. During my all staying, I have been feeling very supported and uh, loved, and um, and this is what is for me. For me, Wachimawasi is family. It's a great feeling. It's a warm feeling, and it just it's beautiful to actually be amongst people like yourself that is seeking to make their life better, you know, through this plant medicine. And I just love being here. I mean, this is like my home. Sergei is continuously stressing the importance of trusting the direct spiritual experience versus blindly following ideologies. He believes that this alone can provide you with the understanding and truth that you are seeking. Saying that, we have had several important conversations that are worth hearing on different subjects. reading Eastern philosophies for many years and I was seeking for a method that could help me to connect to myself and experience reality the way I experienced that when I was a kid purely deeply magically and I saw lots of wisdom in Eastern traditions but I also felt that these are mostly words and words can lead to the experience but the experience is the ultimate teacher. So there are a lot of good words but it's just words. So I knew that I need shamanic experience which is the key for understanding, is the key for seeing reality as it is. And I had psychedelic experiences before 
so I already knew that higher states of consciousness are real. And what was missing is the guidance, is the sort of framework to put it in. So this is when I start thinking that combining the energy of the plants and the wisdom of these ancient teachers with a certain philosophical frame can be very beneficial for us to understand ourselves and the world we live in. So essentially this is what I do and this is the path I share. I encourage people to read and study and filter that through shamanic experience. This medicine is the medicine of truth and it has the power to make you rethink your ways, which is a good thing if you are a spiritual seeker because you don't want to follow an ideology. And if you're following an ideology or a teacher or a certain way, this medicine allows you to revisit it and see it for what it is. And if you see holes in it, then you know that they are. This medicine can help you to revisit your thinking, your belief systems, your path, and help you see what really matters in your life. This medicine brings you here and now. And these are not just words, this is the fundamental experience of life, which is natural, but for some reason we don't experience that in the daily life. So this medicine brings you back to that point where you have an opportunity to touch the heart of existence. That's the message I'm trying to get across. Uh, unfortunately, people confuse sacred medicine with drugs, when in reality, sacred medicine is exactly what it is. It's medicine and it's sacred because it has the power to cure your soul, it has the power to give you your life back, it has the power to get you off addictions and drugs and alcohol and self destructive behavior. So you use a sacred plant in order to become a better person and live your life easier and happier. Drugs is what you buy in the pharmacy and on the streets and they have a different function. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. And you know, when you have a headache and you take an aspirin, you just take in the drug. But it's a good drug, it just helps you with the headache and just feel better. But if you go on the street and buy heroin or cocaine, well, this is going to fry your brain, eventually. These are bad drugs. But medicine is a whole another category. There is a teaching in it that is coming from somewhere. You can attribute it to the spirit of the plant, you can attribute it to the higher self, you can ascribe it to divine inspiration and all of this is correct but that's the essence of this work is to come to that place within you which feels sacred and you know it and from that place you see life as sacred and this viewpoint in itself inspires and heals you and makes you want to live a moral life. The ancient world was shamanic. 
with the Christian era, shamanic traditions came under um, attack, organized religion took over and turned this into a certain monopoly where you don't have a direct access to divine anymore. When in fact shamanic traditions based on that connection this medicine for me in particular is my direct access to divine and I'm not the only one who feels that way and this is not the only medicine that makes you feel that way so there was a big uh, confrontation between organized religion certain dominance and control over divinity with direct experience of it over the centuries it just made illegal suppressed and eventually nearly forgotten but you just cannot make nature illegal you can try but can you make those trees illegal it's absurd it's a ridiculous notion that we fall into believing nature is legal and that is my main message not only nature is legal nature is the cure that we need as humanity so banning the cure it's no less than a crime against humanity Well, it depends on the depth that you have established here. If the connection you made is strong and deep, then you carry that home. You don't need to have medicine there. The connection that you make here with yourself, that feeling stays and you take it back with you. And the insights, of course, and the understandings that you experience here, these are yours to carry. These are your gifts. These are the gifts of the spirit. So, for example, if you felt like you were not living your life fully or in the right way and there is certain things that have to change, that this is how you stay connected to the medicine and to your vision and to the teaching. You make the necessary changes that you have seen necessary here. And by making them, you create more happiness in your life you heal yourself and you get rid of self-destructive behaviors and toxic relationships and you know whatever that is on your path that has to be healed and taken care of but this is how you stay connected by following the guidance by making the changes that you have understood that are needed in your life and of course, spending time in nature and silence. And through this, this experience will come through. Well, our world is in crisis. And if we don't come to our senses as humanity fairly soon, we will have a world to wake up to. This medicine is the antidote for the madness we see in the world. This is the cure for personal stupidity and cultural. This medicine is the end of bullshit in your life. It makes you take your life seriously and live it consciously. I think it's time to wake up and revisit our values, relations and come back to nature where we came from. Nature holds the key to 
future. Nature that is now being destroyed. We need to wake up and live life consciously. When you are present, when you are living the moment, you appreciate it. You understand that this life is all you have. And this is the message you want to share with others. So they can have the same appreciation for life. And that's how we evolve as humanity. We transmit our knowledge to our kids and grandkids. But in order to transmit something, you have to have something. So this medicine is the gateway to wisdom. True wisdom comes from your heart. One of my favorite quotes of Sergi's is in his saying that the Wachuma cactus is in fact a beauty detector and that it allows you to see beauty and meaning everywhere, even in a drop of rain. If this medicine is calling you, answer the call.
bundle away.